Hello everyone and welcome back to How I Became. Now for this week's interview, we are talking to Kyle, or Saab Kylo 4 as most of you will know him. What's up? Um, so Kyle makes a really, really cool, interesting YouTube videos around cars. Uh, he does in-depth reviews, right? Would that be a correct way of explaining it? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah, and uh, Kyle makes videos out in America. Uh, you're based in North Carolina, right? Yeah, I am, yeah. So Kyle, how did you become Saab Kylo 4? Well, I had an old email address back in the day that I just used to create the channel. Um, basically, my first car was a Saab. Uh, it was a 1997 900 turbo convertible. Um, got it when I turned 16. That's what I learned to, to drive on primarily. And I don't know. The, the name just kind of stuck around for a while. And then I started the channel with it. And it just happened to grow. So I got stuck with this username that doesn't make sense to, to anyone. <laughs> so it's like with my channel trailer, I started it off like, this is my first car. That's why it's called Saab Kylo 4. But uh, yeah, it's, that's that's basically it. Sure. And were you watching YouTube, video then be YouTube videos then before you started uploading? Or was this oh, channel yeah. designed or created just to upload videos? Yeah. So I, I, I started the channel back when I was um, in undergrad and I, I was watching, you know, bunch of different channels seeing everybody making videos of you know their personal cars and you know some people doing reviews and stuff and i was like oh that's sounds like a lot of fun good way to pass the time when i'm not yeah buried in books <laughs> okay and uh were you watching just automotive content then or were you watching different areas of youtube like what, what were your favorite channels uh, from when before you started pretty much automotive content um you know stuff like motor trend and Okay. Some of some other independent guys from from back in the day. There was uh, one channel I particularly liked uh, called Baja Busta, which is now Test Drive Junkie, and he would upload like a lot of like old Motor Week reruns and stuff from like years past and just stuff like that. Sure. Yeah. So I guess niche stuff around the kind of cars that yeah. you're interested yeah. in at the time. Yeah, that's really cool. So what was the thought process then behind your first videos when you first started like, loading car content? Was it was there was there a you know a business aspect in mind or were you just uploading them to show friends? Like what was the thought process there? Well, I I well back when I was in high school and younger, whenever I was interested in learning about cars or just you know looking at them more closely, I'd go on eBay or any of those like classified sites because typically people would post sixty or more photos of the cars. So yeah. if it was a cool car, doesn't matter if it was a regular or supercar, I was like, oh, I can see all the little details from all these pictures. So when I start first started making videos, I was like, well, how can I do that and, and turn it into a video format? So all of my early videos are basically just me walking around with this little old three megapixel point and shoot <laughs> camera. Just Walking around the car, showing little details. You know, it's got 17-inch wheels. It's got this and that and that. And that's that's basically, um, you know, I would take these tripods and like jerry rig them up in between the front seats to like get little uh, <laughs> driving videos and stuff. But it was it was fun. It's just uh, just general enjoyment of cars. Yeah, and you were doing that then. You were doing that. You said with this kind of older camera, and that leads on to my next question then. <laughs> You know, what equipment did you use when you first started making videos? So if it was this jerry rig tripod and yeah, this it was, really old <laughs> it was, camera. And, and I guess how does that differ? How does that differ to today? Like what equipment are you using today? And, you know, what benefits does that that maybe probably better? I hope better equipment and kind of yeah. have on, on the videos <laughs> yeah. that you create. So I, I, I try to keep things, you know, simple, um, you know, ease, ease of filming, ease of editing, ease on my computer, all that, all that kind of stuff right now. Um, I use uh, two Canon camcorders primarily, both shoot 1080p at 60 frames. Um, I have these wind mics and stuff that go on top, so I keep the audio clean and stuff. I use GoPros for all of my interior driving footage and, and okay, yeah. stuff like that. Um, I don't have any lav mics. That's probably something that I should invest in, but I haven't had a huge need for it yet, so I'm trying to just get by. <laughs> but um, it's, that's, that's been primarily my setup for the last few years. Okay. And do you have additional cameramen or is it just you on a, on a film shoot? Do you film me you know, kind of solo or as a, as a it's team? Just, all of the reviews are, are just me. Um, when it comes, there's a lot of, there's a lot of detail that you put into those reviews yeah. and all the different angles. And that must be a, a long editing process as well, right? It is. It is. Depending on the car, it can take 
two, three days, that, wow. not including filming time. But yeah. the, 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 the review process is just basically me going to a nearby park and just kind of taking my time, going through all the little details and stuff and, and, and just, just kind of hanging out. But when it comes to any of the vlog type videos that we've done in the past, um, or especially the, the 240 SX project videos, I'll have my friend Chris or my wife Crystal um, take take a camera point so we can make it a little bit more fun, not quite so structured and, and, and formal like the reviews are. Yeah, so, you make it a bit more organic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. And then so with your traditional review videos, how much research happens before you ever even see the car? Uh, I assume you have certain contacts in certain industries where you're able to yeah. source the cars. But what is the what is the process leading up to shoot day? Are you are you reading, you know, in bed or are you kind of doing, you know, rushing, kind of looking on your phone as, as you know, you're on your way to the shoot, as it were? A little bit of everything. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of depends on timing and, and, and uh, how long I usually have to prepare before the shoot. Sometimes I okay. find out the day before I'm going to shoot something. And I'm like, oh gosh. Uh, basically, the, the most important thing for, for me is just, uh, especially today, because there's so much technology packed in cars, I want to make sure I, I'm able to, to pick out little little nuances, little cool things. Like, for example, uh, a lot of new Chevrolets, their infotainment system can raise up and down to reveal a little hidden storage compartment. So okay, that's cool. it's really nice to find that kind of stuff out beforehand or like yeah. B&W's gesture control, figuring out how that works. So if I'm going to demonstrate all that stuff on film, I don't look like I'm, I'm bumbling, <laughs> fumbling everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, it's uh, there is so much that goes into cars though, like you said, as, especially with the newer and newer cars that kind of get more technology involved in them, not Makes just in the so infotainment much harder systems. On my part. But... <laughs> Yeah, I'm that's really cool. Older cars just for that reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah, old, yeah. I guess older cars must be simpler, yeah, because there's no yeah. crazy interiors to look around. It's just exactly. like here's the gauge cluster. That's about it. Pretty much. You know, it's a, a simple dashboard. That's really cool. So, what is there a a single video or a time on the channel which kind of accelerated your growth? Was there a a viral review that you did, maybe of a, a hypercar, a supercar that you Actually, thought, wow, yes. this is this is becoming like a a big thing now. Like this is yeah. this is something for the future. Well, you know, there's so, so many people making videos in, in the automotive space on yeah. YouTube that it is, it's hard, it's, it's even, it's hard for me to like, you know, to, to break through that ceiling. But back when I started, there weren't very many people doing videos or there weren't a lot of people that had the opportunity because people just didn't understand what YouTube was all about. My biggest video back in the day was, um, you know, when the Aventador first came out. Okay, had yep. the opportunity to film a, a, a demo car or, or something at uh, the local local Lamborghini dealership. And I didn't get to drive it or anything like that. That was way, way back then. <laughs> um, but I did get to ride along, get some cool reactions and stuff. And it was right when the car came out or was being available to dealers. So it was like right timing. Uh, that video hit like 2 million views within wow. uh, six months, eight or maybe a year or something. It sure. was really what, cool. What were your videos at the time doing kind of as an average, uh, you know, against that um, 2 million that it received in six months? Uh, it really depends. Uh, I re I can't remember. It was so long ago. I, if I <laughs> guess 30, 40,000. Okay, so Maybe. two million views was like huge then, yeah, right? That wasn't yeah. like a because because back then I really wasn't filming a lot of new cars. They were just random things that I saw at you know dad's dealership that he had that I started filming at, or stuff that I would see at auctions, just doing little tours. I like old Caprices and and, and cat yeah. like Bromes and stuff like that. Stuff that's just so like niche and stuff. Yeah. Um. So to have a video like that, it was like wow, that's, that's crazy. And, uh, kind of around that point, I started thinking, well, you know, when it comes to filming these more special vehicles, I need to put a little bit more effort into them. And that's where the whole in-depth stuff started coming from. Okay. And, and how, was there a, again, was there an organic thought process there? Or did you really plan out, you know, the kind of more in-depth videos Were you like, these are the areas we have to have in, or was it, it just kind more of that every review that. kind of developed the, the, the whole kind of, I guess, uh, yeah, you know, kind of series of content. Yeah. So 
my videos, as as they have become today, are, are based off of what the, the feedback that people have given me over the years. So, obviously, my videos are, are very, very different from normal car reviews yeah. basically everywhere else. Um, I try to keep the focus on the car so people can just kind of sit there and study it. So if you're just a car enthusiast who likes learning about cars, it's I try to make that the best video for that person. That being said, you know, everything from having the hazards flashing while I'm doing the, the snap yeah. shots and stuff, that's all – or honking the horn. That's all stuff that people are like, hey, could you throw this into the video too? Because for someone who doesn't have the opportunity to go around and, and, and see all these vehicles – it kind of makes them feel like they're there in person. So yeah, way, no, I definitely I like if there was thing. if there was one like unique thing I remember from each one of your videos is just after you've done a walk around of the car, it's okay. We're gonna is it un, un, unlock it and then like put down the windows down and then <laughs> put on the hazards, um, and then that's kind of like signals you moving into the next stage of the video. And yeah, it, I guess it is. You're right. Like small things like that that the audience want and they pick up on. You know, kind of helps keep the audience engaged and feel like they're, they're kind of there and a part of it. And it's kind of funny. Like I've, I've had to mold the format and, 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 and just everything, especially over the last year with, with everything that's changing with YouTube to try to make things a bit more quick hitting and not so drawn out. Cause gosh, my yeah. videos used to be, they're <laughs> still long, but they used to be up in the 30 minutes or 40 minutes, depending on the vehicle. Like, it was insane. Yeah. But, you, and, but those uh, videos provided almost like a, a Wikipedia, weren't they, for cars? Yeah, like if you wanted a car and you were in America and it was the model you wanted, yeah. that was the video where you got everything from, you know, the the differential ratios all the way through to the exactly. interior options. It was, it used it was to be, exact, exactly what people wanted. It used to be just this massive fact dump. <laughs> I would just take all these facts and just blurt them out all throughout the video. <laughs> it was just like relentless facts back and forth and that's been one thing I've been trying to really really work on over the last two three years is or it's the whole time but especially lately is getting better at writing talking a little bit more about my experiences with the car because I don't like doing the whole opinionated thing a whole lot I feel like my job at least on my channel and, and, and based on my viewership I want to educate people you know yeah give give um uh, the the critiques as as needed but i want the viewer to make the determination in the end whether they like a car or not because the only way you're really going to know that is whether you take all the information you get interested yeah that, that car is kind of cool i need to go drive it or i need to go look at it in person you do that you get behind the wheel take in the whole experience then you really know whether this car is for you or not it shouldn't be up to me to be like Eh, you don't like this, or you won't like this, or oh, based yeah. on my own opinion. And yeah, so you, that's you provide the kind of content that I watch. You know, every time I'm on Auto Trader or somewhere like that, I'm like, I really want one of those cars now. Uh, if, just because I've seen them and I've seen the price, right. and maybe they're good value or something, or they're yeah. fast. And then I YouTube search a video for them, and then I watch 40 minutes of it, and then I'm like, <laughs> I need to go test drive these. I'm like, yeah, you you help them move on to the next step and, yeah. and kind of be informed rather than having maybe a dealer walk around the car and go, right. oh yeah, so uh, there's, here's there's, yeah, it's boring, isn't it? That's not. <laughs> You don't want to go down on a on a Sunday morning to a dealership where it's freezing cold to be told things that you can be told over the internet for free, um, you know, from the comfort of your own bed, which yep. is which is fantastic. You yep. speak about um, the the feedback you gain from the videos and kind of how that shaped your channel, but yeah. what social media channels do you use to to gain feedback? Like where where are you most active and where do you you most likely to look when when you know when people are kind of giving you feedback on previous videos is it is it is it youtube comments or facebook or twitter or instagram well as as you might imagine i i get so many comments on youtube oh, yeah. it's just <laughs> impossible so on new videos i usually try to monitor comments 24 48 hours answer as many questions as i can obviously i'm not able to get to all of them sometimes i wish i could but I, I do try my best. I do, I do get a lot of feedback from that, and it's, it's very, very helpful. But I'm also really active on Instagram. Um, I also I push a lot of stuff to Facebook. 
a um, little bit of following on Twitter, not not quite so much, but definitely Instagram and Facebook. We're also on Drive Tribe. Um, Chris helps me manage that. Like, again, all these all these yeah. social platforms all over the place. It's like, <laughs> gosh, does it ever? Yeah, stop? It's, it's a full time job on its own, just managing all the social it media is. accounts. It when really you've got to is. Keep them all updated. <laughs> Yeah, that's really cool. It's it, yeah, it's it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, your your channel has become well known, like we've just discussed, for these kind of unique styles of videos. Now, this is not to be a, you know disrespectful in any way, but the core components of the videos are relatively simple. Like yeah. I, I I in theory could go and spend two days or a and, day and filming he, all these different angles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but what make what do you feel is the key component, the key ingredient that makes your videos different and makes them stand out and has enabled you to, you know, to reach a million plus subscribers now, which is something that although other people are making content out there, not many other people have reached. Yeah. Know, there's only a few thousand people on the entirety of YouTube that have reached that number. So it, do you think there is a, a key ingredient? You know, what what was the what do you feel well, like is kind of I've had with that. a lot of people ask me that. A lot of people are like, hey, I was thinking about starting my own channel and doing car reviews. Do you have any advice and stuff? And like, it, it's different from person to person. For me, what's always worked well is, is the consistency of the format. While yeah. some people are like, oh my gosh, this guy talks so <laughs> much. It's so boring. Like, yeah, yeah. But it, for me, that's always worked. Like the the people who come to Saab Kyla for, they expect a certain type of video. So, if I do an in depth video on the Aventador S, and then I turn around and do an in depth video on the Shelby GT500 or even a Honda Civic, or it doesn't matter, it will get the same ex same exact treatment, same type of information, same angles, but. Obviously, the, the 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 narrative and and the facts and all that stuff are are different, um, but the core structure of the video always stays the same. And I think, in a way, that's comforting. Like for me, that's comforting because if I am watching somebody's channel that I really like a particular format, and then all of a sudden they upload my favorite car and they kind of throw throw it for a loop and it's different, I'm just kind of like, oh man, it's, yeah, it's not what you've come uh, to expect. Uh, yeah, yeah. So. That's that's always worked. I, I really like the format. Um, I don't know. That's 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 probably my best my best answer for that. Yeah. Okay. So you you've built a brand and a, and a series of content where everybody knows exactly what they're coming for, and you consistently make that. Like you said, if it's from to, one car like, to another, you know, you have different different cars, but it's all the same right. thought process, and you're going to get the same information. And in I theory, think, you could compare video to video, and you know, compare two cars if you wanted to. I guess. Yeah, and, and, and myself, Chris, who's uh, Chris Holly's my business manager, and my wife, Crystal, like. Crystal's a full-time pharmacist. She helps me out uh, whenever she can with social media and stuff. Chris and I, um, I think we make a pretty good team. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. We're all we're all in here <laughs> hanging out. <laughs> um, but we work really hard to establish a filming network, or we have worked hard to establish a filming network. So I get a lot of requests for cars and stuff, and you know I can pretty much find anything that that people are looking for. The limitation at the end of the end of the day is just the lack of manpower and the fact that we don't have a massive team of, of editors. Like I'm the only one doing the reviews, yeah. um, but you know I have a lot of relationships with manufacturers, a lot of dealership relationships. That's why I try, or I've been able to upload more variety than most uh, car channels do. So I'll put up that 720s, and then I'll turn around and put up a 92 Ford Mustang GT. So, yeah, or that nineteen fourteen car, which is your most recent exactly. video. Like that's that's such a, a breadth of, breadth of content, kind of a, a difference in content. It's crazy. I, I love doing that. I, I, it's yeah. especially back in the day. I was I, I'd be like, oh, I'll put this Bugatti up, and then I'll put something just completely polar opposite, and just <laughs> <laughs> just blow minds and stuff. But that's that's just yeah. what I've always done. That's really, really cool. So when did YouTube then become a full-time job for you? Was there any specific moment, any specific like kind of timing or, kind or period of. on your channel where you where you were like, okay, I can drop everything else and, and do this moving forward? So I um, also went to pharmacy school. That's where Crystal and I met, and uh, I graduated back in 2013. The channel was already doing pretty well up to that point. I mean, uh, as much as I could do during school. And your last year of pharmacy school, you're, you're 
basically working 40 hours a week. You're oh, wow. taking okay. through different settings from compounding or hospital to retail, all sorts of types of stuff. Um, so as you might expect, it was really hard to try to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not easy to get a few car reviews in there. Yeah, so I when I graduated and I was trying to figure out what field I might have been interested in going with, I decided to just try YouTube full time for I don't know six months or so, just to see if I could do something with it, with with all my effort poured into it. And later that year, I had got my two first um, um, press unveiling trip opportunities. That, yeah, so you were invited with a so manufacturer yeah, to yeah. a car launch. Yeah, yeah, and and they were um, the 2014 Kia Soul. And the 2014 Rolls Royce Wraith. <laughs> so, well, they're two completely different cars. That's a that's a perfect start to your <laughs> channel, isn't it? Really, for, for press events, it runs in line perfectly. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so serious. <laughs> <laughs> so, long story short, I just I got I kept getting opportunities, and this is way before I started getting press cars. Yeah, uh, and I just stuck with it. I drove wherever I needed to drive to get the content that I needed to do. Um, and just 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 worked as hard as I could, and it just started taking off to the point where I was like, I think it's I think I got something really good going, and I just stuck with it. So I'm I've been doing it full time now since May 2013. That's really really cool. Yeah, it's great it's great to to hear you know this story of your your channel starting and how you're doing all these different cars and you still do that today, but also weirdly enough the manufacturer side you know the more commercial side and the yeah. business side kind of married up as well whereas yeah. these two first opportunities are two but completely I, I, different absolutely. cars I, I love what i do it's an absolute blessing to be here I, i've i've grown up around cars my whole life uh, you know from my grandpa and my dad instilling like the love of american muscle and stuff to, yeah to being able to appreciate what makes a supercar costs what it costs, and the engineering <laughs> yeah. that's going into cars nowadays, and then turning around and being able to drive cars that I grew up just idolizing and always wanting, and now I can take for a day or a week or whatever and really experience it, and then somehow compare them all and, and <laughs> these narratives. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and create these really cool videos that live forever, and, and some of them, you know kind of continue to grow in a huge viewership. Now, yeah. talking about the the full-time side of YouTube, and you slightly mentioned this previously, and I want to come back to this point, but there's there's been this recent kind of adpocalypse, I think most people have called it on YouTube, yeah. where you know, YouTube's monetization and their viewership has been kind of affected or marred in a way by right. some controversies that have happened on the platform through various different influencers. Yeah. And uh, has this has this at all affected your, your channel in, in the automotive world? Like, how has this played a part in, into your business and how it's continued to develop? Well, the, it's definitely not like it was. Um, if take this point last year, it's it's a lot different. I think uh, I think the biggest thing for me, I think, uh, and, and just just talking with all the other car review guys in, in, in the space, because we, we've all been trying to figure this out too, there appears to have been like a shift in the algorithm and what the algorithm picks up and, and takes off and stuff with more of a priority towards, I don't like to use the word clickbait, but that, that kind of stuff and daily Yeah, like plugs. daily lifestyle yeah. with cars rather than car content. And when you it's think about it, car, yeah. traditional car reviews, again, are, are very niche. Like yeah. most car reviews nowadays, they have a question or, or, or something in the title or the thumbnail that wouldn't make you think it's really a car review, but it actually is. It's just a different way of presenting it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, circling back to the, to the, the adpocalypse and stuff, I didn't notice anything alarming about that. I've always tried to make my videos very, very family friendly because I know I have a lot of younger kids that watch my videos. I've had the fortune of meeting a lot of them over the years. Um, and it's it's been really cool to see you know kids at such a young age wanting to watch videos as crazy in depth as mine. It's like <laughs> yeah, oh, being so into cool. cars from such a young age, much like you were and, and other people yeah. in the world. Yeah. So I, I I've always tried to make my videos very very even keel, no profanity, none of that kind of stuff. And I think that's what a major issue was with with you know seeing loss in views, loss in revenue with with some other channels and stuff. I know that's probably not always the case i i'm honestly not fully like 
up to date with all the little um yeah all of the yeah minutiae of it yeah yeah but uh, the i think the biggest change for me is just really the shift in algorithm and just trying to adapt to that which is kind of what i was talking about earlier with modifying the format and stuff but it's still i mean at the end of the day i'm, I'm still able to do this full time doing something that i love um Chris has been working with me full time for a little over a year now, and you know we're we're just we're hanging tight and it's can't complain. It's it's still still great. <laughs> yeah, it's really really cool to see. And, and... Day, it's still better than doing what I was going to do, which <laughs> I could have done, but I I wasn't as passionate about as as I am this. Yeah. That's really, really cool. And so what is one thing that you wish you knew when you started making videos that you know now? What is one piece of advice that, you know, if you could go back to Kyle, what was it you said what, six years ago now or however long it was? What is, what is that one piece of advice you could go back to, to you know, previous you and, and impart on yourself to, to, you know, maybe make your videos better or grow faster or, you know, is well, there a single piece of advice you could kind of pinpoint? Yeah, well, first of all, Pick a different name. <laughs> Pick a name that made sense. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> no, but seriously, I, I probably, um, if I had known what it could have become over time, or what it, what it what it would have become, I probably would have jumped on you know some social platforms maybe a little bit earlier like instagram and stuff like that being a little bit more of an early adopter and stuff but and maybe keeping up with youtube trends a little bit more but i've been really fortunate to have a lot of of car opportunities a lot of filming like we stay really really busy i'm yeah. so backed up with filming all the time <laughs> so really I'm just trying to get the videos out as quick as I can, balancing around press events and stuff. So at the end of the day, I guess you, you can't really complain. It's a good thing to be – it's it's a wonderful thing to be too busy versus not busy. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I guess, yeah. Sure. No, no, that makes sense. I might, I mean, have, got, I might uh, have gone on a little bit of a tangent, but <laughs> oh no, don't worry about it. That's what makes these things so interesting. It's it's all about finding out, you know, the behind the scenes and the, the thought the thought process of how these things started. And yeah, you know, if there was anything that you'd do from the beginning, you know, it's 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 yeah, you, know, you don't want to dwell on it too much, but it is intriguing. I think you know from the answers we've had from other influencers, it's uh yeah, it, it's super well, cool to see. I guess and, I could uh, add another little tidbit. You know, I, I've been just kind of figuring out this whole YouTube thing along the way. Every single day is a learning process. And that's another yeah. important thing for anybody starting new YouTube channels is there is no way you're going to figure it out in the first month or the first year or the first five years. There's <laughs> always stuff changing. It's like pharmacy. There's always stuff that's changing. You gotta Yeah, there's always new things being added, old things being taken away, like yeah. the way things work have been changed, the way you should do things, you know, the order of things and yep. Yeah, it's it's always that you always have to adapt, and I guess that's a good thing as well because it keeps you on your toes, and you don't get True. complacent in your in your video style or or what you upload or how you upload it or where you share it, like you said. Right. Yeah. Which is cool. So my final question here, uh, to, to kind of end this interview, is to discuss where is the Saab Kyle 04 channel going next? Uh, are we going to be seeing, you know, Saab Kyle automobiles? Are you going to be, you know, competing <laughs> against Tesla in the, the electric world? Are we going to be seeing more pre-war cars or hyper cars? Like, what what it, what do you feel like your next steps are moving into the the future of the channel? Well, I definitely want to maintain the variety that I had started with back in the early days. I've Definitely gotten into more of the journalist loop um, with with the type of cars that I receive and stuff. But I don't want to forget about the vehicles and the style and stuff that I started with, with originally. And while I, I try to be as much of a perfectionist as, as I can, but um, regardless of changing the format or, or changing the quality or, or, or whatever, I want to make sure that I don't lose that those core values that made the video special at the beginning. Um, I mean, I, I don't know. As far as, you know, YouTube kind of is the main platform right now, but if anything else ever comes along, if there's another platform that's maybe dedicated more towards automotive, like automotive, and then you could do video and all that kind of stuff. I mean, yeah. you, you never know. Like like you said, stuff is changing so much nowadays, it's hard to know yeah, what the next two years is going to is gonna bring. But um, I definitely just want to, you know, stick with it and 
and um, just have fun and, and just do the best I can, really. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Carl, for coming on. Um, if any of you who are watching this interview have never seen Carl's channel before, I don't know where you've been, but there'll be a link down in the description below where you can go watch all of his videos, subscribe to his channel, and uh, learn more about cars, and maybe pick your next car via a car video. And yeah. if you do, obviously make sure you tweet him, Instagram him, Facebook him, or you know send a message on YouTube, because um, that's what we like to see. We like to see the feedback. So, Kyle, thank you so much for coming on. Like I've said, uh, be sure to subscribe to the How He Became channel as well for more interviews coming very, very soon. And uh, I will see you next time. Yeah, appreciate it. Thanks for watching.